How's it going, folks? Now that the animal buddies are all out of the way, let's move on to something a little bit more mechanical. This time, I'll be talking about Diamond Dog's pet robot, D. Walker. D. Walker becomes available after the player practically kidnaps Huey. After a little bit of friendly convincing, D. Walker and all his components become projects for the R&D team. It's this detail that sets D. Walker apart from the other buddies. Usually, buddies expand their capabilities as their bond level increases. For example, at certain bond level thresholds, D. Dog learns Bark, and D. Horse learns Defecate. D. Walker, on the other hand, forgoes a bond level entirely. Instead of a bond level, D. Walker's capabilities increase alongside the proficiency of the R&D team. More advanced equipment and commands come from parts that will first need to be developed, but once developed, can be traded in and out to cover a multitude of situations. That means, then, D. Walker has a vast repertoire of mission capabilities, so instead of pigeonholing its capabilities, like I did with D-Dog and D-Horse, I'm going to take this thing apart, piece by piece, and go through all the different components that are available, which means there's a lot to get through, so I'm going to start with the most important ones first. 1. D-Walker's Heads D-Walker's various heads are the parts that change its behaviour in the field the most, mainly because they dictate what sort of buddy you want it to be. The first basic head is the support head. It comes with a standard whistle function, which summons D Walker to Snake's side, just like this command does with the other buddies. But once the head is updated, it's fitted with stealth camouflage. A heavily armed robot in enemy territory will obviously draw a lot of attention, even if it's just standing there doing nothing. And D Walker is pretty flamboyant, to say the least. So having it turn invisible while it's unmanned is a useful function. Unfortunately, D Walker cannot be ridden on during stealth mode, so it's mainly there just for D Walker's safety. It's worth remembering then that enemies can still discover D Walker if they literally bump into it, so it's better to not park it in the middle of a patrol route, even if it is in stealth mode. The support head then is best used for a D Walker that's all about transportation. The next head is the scouting head. The description in the top right there tells us that it's fitted with a video surveillance system capable of identifying hostiles, so immediately we can take that to mean it will mark guards. When D Walker is ordered into search mode, he will scout out around 175 meters, which puts D Dog's detection range to shame. However, D Dog had a full 360 degree radius of detection, whereas D Walker is a lot more focused, which is why I mentioned the video surveillance in the description. D Walker only marks enemies that are in the direction it's facing, much like a surveillance camera. It's a massive detection range, mind you, so leaving D Walker just on the periphery of a base and facing toward it can be a massive help. Interestingly, walls, buildings, and terrain don't seem to hinder its search either. You can park D Walker behind a mountain for all it matters. As long as it's facing the outpost you want it to scope out, it'll do it without a problem. So the scouting head would be perfect for a D-Walker that acts as a spotter of a sniper duo, or even as a radar in enemy territory. And finally, there is the intercept head. When ordered to intercept, D-Walker will engage any enemy in its actual line of sight. So for this head, solid walls do actually matter. Like all the other functions, D-Walker remains glued to the spot, so don't expect it to run off and hunt down guards for you. The intercept head has a decent detection range on it, I found D Walker will fire on guards that wander into the area 60 meters in front of it, but I've also seen it return fire on enemies as far as 180 meters away, with shocking efficiency. There is a caveat to intercept mode though. D Walker will only use the sub or secondary weapon you fit it with, and to make the matter worse, once that weapon is out of ammo, the mode is completely useless. It just stands there like a lemon. The intercept head then is perfect for a D Walker that needs to be Another guy with a gun, to put it bluntly. Whether that gun is lethal, non-lethal, loud or quiet, is up to you. I found the intercept head is great for stealth approaches that use misdirection. D Walker can draw the attention of all the guards while you sneak through the cracks that battle creates. And because of tactics like that, I should stress that this is the only buddy that will stand ground with you in a firefight, and do a good job at it too. 2. D Walker's Weaponry D Walker's firearms come in two flavours, main weapons and sub-weapons. The main weapons are heavy duty stuff, let's talk about them first. First you have the Gatling gun, which is your standard heavy machine gun. 
It operates the same way as turrets or anti-air emplacements and will overheat with use. It comes with a boatload of ammo though and is effective against just about anything. Then we have anti-tank missiles. Like the Gatling gun, these are another standard heavy weapon. It's a rocket launcher with a targeting system, good for taking care of armoured vehicles and metal gears alike. Then we have the flamethrower. It's effective against all types of infantry, even the fully armoured foot soldiers. Just a tap of the fire button is enough to kill a guard outright. The flamethrower also ignores ballistic shields. It will destroy vehicles eventually, but it's better off sticking to organic targets. It can also cause small bushfires, so that's something to be careful of. Then we have the high voltage discharger. This thing never runs out of juice, it just needs to be charged. A level 1 charge shoots a single narrow electrical bolt with a range of around 10 meters. At level 2, the charge shoots a bolt with a range of 20 meters. Both charge levels have a small area of effect, so enemies bunched together will all be shocked. Level 3 has a range of 30 meters and will shoot a 5 meter wide wave rather than a bolt, making it even easier to catch more enemies. Unfortunately, the discharger's attacks have no effect on guards inside vehicles, but the bolts will travel through the vehicle to hit any guards standing on the other side. It's the same for walls as well. If a guard is standing close to the other side of a wall, the bolt will travel through and stun them. And the last main weapon is the Fulton Ballista. As the name suggests, it operates with a wind-up and fires silently. Its range on flat ground is around 70 meters, but with the right elevation, I've got a shell to fly as far as 170 meters. Whatever the shell hits will instantly be Fultoned out of the field, for free, I should add, and anything can be Fultoned like normal, so guards, animals, vehicles, containers, whatever you want. The shell travels slowly through the air though, so moving targets can be a little tricky to catch, but the results speak for themselves. Then we have D-Walker's sub-weapons. Unfortunately, the sub-weapons aren't as exotic as the main weapons. We have silenced pistols, both trank and lethal varieties, a machine pistol, and a submachine gun. All the sub-weapons work in the same way they do when Snake himself is using them, so there's not a lot to explain, really. The advantages of D-Walker using them, though, are that the reload times for them are minuscule, and there is next to no recoil. They lack an iron sights mode, though, but what they lack in accuracy they make up for with brute force. Dual wielding trank pistols, for example, means headshots are no longer necessary for fast takedowns. You can just pepper a guard with darts and that will get the job done just as well. 3. D-Walker's CQC D-Walker is fitted with a manipulator arm that follows a very linear upgrade path. It begins as a simple arm that can deliver powerful robotic grabs and uppercuts to enemies. It can also be used to pick up and transport bodies. This isn't a particularly unique ability though, as it's exactly the same as what Snake can do, but in D-Walker's case, it's still able to use all of the weapons, including the heavy duty main weapons. Once developed though, this arm can be equipped with a machete, and after that, a skulls inspired machete. The normal machete will more often than not wound an enemy instead of outright killing them, whereas the Skulls machete will always kill an enemy, and can even take out vehicles and anti-air emplacements in a single strike. Both varieties of machete are controlled the same though. In fact, they control very similarly to Snake's knife from MGS3. A quick press of the attack button will do a couple of slash attacks, and a hold of the attack button will do a thrust. Coupling machete attacks with D-Walker's running mode means you can advance quickly on isolated targets and neutralize them with a running slash, very similar to Snake's running bionic punch. 4. Its Auxiliary Abilities D-Walker has two modes of traversal, Walking Mode and Running Mode. Walking Mode is the default. D-Walker lives up to its name and will use its legs to get around. Metal Gear Cannon tells us that apparently giving legs to a tank is a great idea. Well, it's not. The reason we don't have Metal Gears in real life is because legs add no tactical advantage to a tank whatsoever. I, I don't even need to say this really, the Metal Gear games have lampshaded this themselves. I'll leave a link to that radio conversation in particular in the description. Go listen to it, it's a, it's a funny little chat. Or you could just watch the opening of Empire Strikes Back and see how easy it was to bring down those stupid things. Anyway, walking mode. It'll get you up small hills and ledges, nothing a set of treads wouldn't achieve, mind you. 
but the footfalls are pretty loud and can give your position away. In running mode though, D Walker disregards all that tanks with legs nonsense and drops its wheels to increase mobility. In this mode, it can move as fast as D-Horse, who, like the previous video showed, travels as fast as the Ape T41LV, the fastest motorised vehicle. However, D-Walker's superior acceleration allows it to hit its top speed instantly, even from standing still, meaning even though they may travel at the same speed, D-Walker would reach the destination before D-Horse solely for being faster out of the gate. Running mode also has great stealth applications too. D Walker's slowest speed while in this mode is slightly faster than Snake's running speed, but of course, running mode makes less noise, so there's no need to slowly tiptoe around guards. D Walker can literally roll up nice and close. Another interesting ability D Walker has is the ability to make you immune to fall damage while riding it. No other vehicle can do this. Driving a jeep, truck, or horse off a high cliff almost always spells death but with D-Walker you can just keep on going like it was nothing. 5. Its Drawbacks and Weaknesses D-Walker's biggest weakness is one it shares with D-Horse. While riding it, you're going to stick out like a... well, like a man riding a robot through the wilderness. D-Walker is by no means a discreet buddy. Sure, it has countermeasures to help against detection, but guards will see you coming from such a greater distance compared to being on foot that total stealth runs only get harder with D Walker around. And that sort of thing, it runs counter to what the buddies are going for, doesn't it? For all its power and application, D Walker's weapon selection lacks variety. I mentioned earlier that D Walker's strength is tied to how advanced the R&D unit is. So wouldn't it have made sense to have any weapon developed for normal use to be an option for D Walker too? I just feel that there are archetypical weapons missing from D Walker's arsenal. Maybe it needed a high powered shotgun, or a souped up sniper rifle, or even a shield. All of these weapons would have fitted well into how D Walker works on a mission. Intercept mode, which I'll remind you comes from the final head of the tech tree, seems a bit half baked. Like I stated earlier, this mode only uses the currently equipped sub weapon to fire on enemies. But because of that lack of variety I just whinged on about, all the sub-weapons are small arms, so this mode loses a lot of tactical value against heavily armoured targets. It's a strange stipulation really, and I can't find a good reason for it. Could you imagine if D-Walker was allowed to use the main weapon in this mode? You could have had D-Walker play the defensive role of a deployable turret, or missile battery. When it comes to transportation, D-Walker is a close rival to D-Horse, but it unfortunately shares the same sort of transitions as jeeps and trucks, whereby you are locked in place for a second while Snake climbs aboard and gets comfortable, severely lacking that fluidity of D-Horse's mounting transition. Also, while D-Walker is faster than D-Horse, it can't pull tight manoeuvres or flow over terrain as easily as our stallion pal. D-Walker has three presets that can be swapped between while out on missions. This is no different from Snake having three pre-made loadouts, the only way to edit D Walker's presets, though, is to return to the customize menu in the ACC. So while Snake can have new weapons or items dropped directly to him mid mission, if you wanted to fit D Walker with a new weapon or head and it's not part of one of the presets, you'll have to retreat back to the ACC to fix that. Or, to put it another way, that's two loading screens you have to sit through until you can go back to whatever it was you were doing. It's because of this I'd only ever use D Walker on missions I knew what I was walking into. I could prep him with the tools I knew I was going to need. Simply put, D Walker is unable to adapt. It's good at tackling problems, just not the unknown. To conclude. So, wow, that took a while. As you can see, the combinations of weapons to heads to other abilities makes D Walker a good buddy to, at the very least, tinker around with. D Walker seems to take elements from the other buddies and put its own spin on it. It can scout, just like D Dog, but it's definitely not as stealthy. And it can transport the player, just like D Horse, but it's definitely not as comfortable with rough terrain. It does have some big exotic guns, though. And sometimes, that's exactly what you need in enemy territory.